Here's the usual disclaimer. I have not seen any of the previous Mad Max films. All I know about them is that they were the vehicle that launched Mel Gibson's career, as well as being a major inspiration for Fist of the North Star. Once again, I'm flying into this completely blind. But one thing I will say is that once again, we have a film that's being overhyped by the public. If you're honestly considering seeing this film, do yourself a favor. Take all of the praise you've been hearing with a really huge fist-sized grain of salt. I'm going to break my usual order and instead start by talking about the technical aspects of the film because this is where I found the most problems. However, let me first go over what I actually liked about the technical aspects of this film. Firstly, I like how the film made use of practical effects. It made the world feel believable. I also liked where they went with some of the color choices of the film. Yeah, some of the symbolism was too obvious and kind of spelt out for the audience, but it made it easy to follow what was going on during the action scenes. Speaking of which, what the hell is up with the frame rate in this film? It's inconsistent throughout the entire runtime. It's like they decided to undercrank the action scenes, which is where you would shoot them at a lower frame rate and then project them at 24 frames per second, and I just don't understand why. It was less like I was watching an action film, and more like I was watching an episode of The Benny Hill Show. It made the scenes hard to follow, and the fact that there wasn't a consistent frame rate it was sticking to made it hard to even focus on some of the more quieter moments because of how choppy and jittery the imagery was. The action scenes and the practical effects themselves looked impressive, but because of the fact that it was all skittery and jittery and choppy, just makes it hard to appreciate it. Were the people making this film being pressured by the studio to keep it under two hours, but instead of deciding to actually, you know, cut stuff from the film like a logical editor would, they instead bargained to just simply speed up all the action scenes. It did not feel necessary, it wasn't necessary, and it just felt like they were doing it for the sake of making the film quote-unquote edgy or hip or avant-garde. So how does the story hold up? Well, the biggest issue I have with the story is that we as an audience are expected to make a lot of assumptions and know about a lot of the information going in, which isn't a good idea when you're trying to reboot a franchise or when you're making an entry a good 20-30 years after the previous film. By expecting us to basically do homework, you're more or less kind of crippling a person's understanding of the film. At least that's how I felt, because like I said, I haven't seen any of the previous films, and so I felt lost. Another problem I had with the film is that it moves at a very breakneck pace. I mean, yeah, it should be ideal to have your film constantly moving, but there is such a thing as moving so fast to the point where you don't really get a chance to really get attached or get invested in the story, and as such don't really care about what's going on. Lastly, did this film really need to be called Mad Max Fury Road? Max himself is more or less a supporting character in the story. I don't mind that per se, but the title itself is a bit misleading in my opinion. They probably should have just called this film Fury Road and have the fact that it's a Mad Max film be a surprise for the audience watching. Or, if you wanted to make it clear that it's a Mad Max film, then a better title would have been Road Warrior Fury Road instead of Mad Max Fury Road because then it wouldn't be as misleading, and it would show that there's more than one road warrior, because that's pretty much what you have in this film. Now, I know I'm going to have to comment on this, since this has been a point of discussion on social media regarding this film. People have been talking about it on Facebook, it's been filling up my feed for days on end, and I am kind of sick of it, but I know I have to talk about it, because I do have to attribute the fact that, because of this discussion, it did get me to go see this film and review it. So... Here's the big thing that a lot of people are talking about in regards to Mad Max Fury Road. People have been saying that this film is some sort of feminist manifesto. Frankly, I just don't see it. Yeah, the female characters aren't written into the usual damsel in distress slash love interest for the hero to rescue and get as a reward, but I don't attribute that as it being a story about a group of women fighting against the patriarchy or fighting against a misogynistic totalitarian regime. I just like to attribute that to the fact that we've been getting better at writing female characters that aren't solely damsels in distress, that aren't solely love interests to be rewards for the hero. And so I don't really see this as something that, oh, it's a feminist film that's putting all these feminist ideas. No, it's just that we've gotten better at writing female characters. Really, at its heart, 
The story of this film is about two characters, well, namely one, Imperiosa, since she gets more of the spotlight, embarking on a journey in order to find redemption, as well as carve out some semblance of peace and freedom in a world that is filled with nothing but chaos. You can argue that there are some feminist ideas in there, that maybe there are some themes that more or less provide subtext, but they aren't actually in the text itself. People calling this film out as a manifesto are either reading too deep into things, putting meaning where there isn't any, or are simply finding something to use as a target slash soapbox because they're upset that their little boys club is disappearing and being stamped out. To be honest, I don't think that's something that anybody is going to miss in the long run when we look back through the course of history, because if these boys clubs are comprised of these whiny little idiots that are so upset and feel so threatened, well, then good riddance, we don't need them. To end things on a positive note, the acting in this film is really good. But to add to the earlier criticism, Hardy isn't really given much time to be more than the usual badass with bits of emotional baggage. It just seems like he wasn't really given much to work with and is more or less overshadowed by Charlize Theron. Overall, this is a decent film, but it's by no means a perfect film like everybody has been saying. While the story itself is well written, the technical failings are too much of a distraction to make the film enjoyable. It also expects you to be already familiar with the world of Mad Max, as this isn't so much a reboot as it is a loose continuation, kind of like Superman Returns. If you like the franchise, you have probably already seen this film. But if you aren't a die-hard fan, then don't pay full price to see this, because it's not worth the headache you get from the choppy cinematography. All of that said, Mad Max Fury Road gets a 3.5 out of 5. So that's it for this episode of Romney's Reviews. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.